Hello friends, how are you doing? I hope you are enjoying the video lessons related to this particular course design and facilitation of e-learning courses. Now, in this particular video lesson, I am going to present assessment in ODL. This is a very important topic. Uh, today, let me discuss, uh, present you the structure first. So, you will come to know what are the contents I am going to cover in this particular video. First is the learning outcome and then I will discuss the concept of assessment and evaluation. Then I will discuss difference between assessment and evaluation. I will discuss about the assessment methods briefly and then I will go to assessment and evolution in open distance learning and then assignments and tutor comments that I will discuss with you. I will tell you what is the importance of assignment and how the tutor comments are written. The learning outcomes are what you will be able to do after attending this particular video lesson. You will be able to define the term assessment and evolution you will be able to differentiate between assessment and evolution. You will be able to discuss how assessment and evolution are conducted in open distance learning system. You will be able to describe importance of assignments in distance education and explain different types of teaching comments. These are the topics uh, which I am going to discuss today and this is your learning outcomes. Let us discuss the concept of assessment and evolution. You know the term assess it originates from the Latin word acidia, it means to sit by, it related to judgment. If you go through the meaning of this term assess in dictionary, you will find that Oxford English Dictionary, as per the dictionary, there are three meanings. First one is that estimate the value of a property or taxation, etc. Second one, fix the amount of a tax, etc. Impose it on a person or community, or third one is estimate the size or quality of something. So, out of these three meaning you can see that the first two meanings are related to taxes. The last meaning has some relation with teaching and learning process. Since the middle of the 20th century psychologists and educationists they have started using the word assess in the field of education and psychology. Now, the latest use let me tell you the latest use of its meaning that is to judge the extent of students learning. So, that is the latest use of the term assessment to judge the extent of students learning according to Freeman and Lewis. Now, the evolution sometimes evolution the word is used synonymously with assessment, but it is little bit different from assessment because evolution is the procedure of assigning values to learning outcome. So, it is a procedure one is procedure and assigning values to the learning outcome during and at the end of a course. So, as per Thorpe, this is the definition of evolution, this is a very popular definition of evolution. Now, let us go to find out the difference between assessment and evolution. Here, I will highlight the main points. Assessment focuses on the learning of the students. So, assessment is related to the students learning, but the evolution focuses on the way the various components of course perform. Have you heard about the program evolution? You may have heard about program evolution, you know that there are various components of a program and each and every component is evaluated. Now, any component of a course syllabus, the teacher, the resources everything can be evaluated. Then assessment focuses on the performance of the students that means, when you are assessing a students you are grading putting a grade and marking, but evolution focuses on the performance of the provider and the provision even the organizer, the institute, the person who is providing and the provision, the process, everything can be evaluated. Assessment results may be used as a source of information for evolution, that is a part of evolution, but evolution results have no direct bearing on students assessment. So, these three important points uh, I wanted to discuss with you while discussing about the differentiation between assessment and evaluation. Now, let me go to another point that is the assessment methods. There are various assessment methods that can be used in face to face situations and these methods most of the methods you can use in online and e-learning situation also. So, there is a need to have a idea an idea about the methods various methods then you can think about it how many methods and what way you can use for e-learning purposes also. But the basic concept is important that is why I am tell I am going to tell you some of the methods keeping the learning objectives in mind. When you consider this uh, 
particular assessment method, then you will have to think about the qualities and abilities you are looking for. Now, as per the learning objectives, because learning objectives are very much associated with the methods, because when you fix an objective, when you formulate an objective, learning objective, what the learner is going to learn or achieve, definitely if you want to assess that particular whether the learners have learned it or not, then you will have to go for selection of a method. So, thinking critically and making judgments is one. If, you, if, if this is the learning objective, then what kind of methods you can use? In essay, you can use essay, you can use assignments, you can ask for report writing, journal writing, you can present a case for interest group also. So, these are some of the other methods are book review or article, particular journal, write a newspaper article, comment on an article's theoretical perspective. These are the methods which will help to assess whether the learner are reflecting, assessing and judging. So, all are related to critical thinking and judgment. Next, uh, if you fix a learning objective that is solving problems and developing plans, the learner will be able to solve problems and develop plans. So, if you want to use some methods, what kind of methods, problem scenario you can use. If you have gone through my presentations on scenario based learning, there I have used this uh, problem based learning. You can recall that one. Group work is very important and anal analysis of a case that is also very important. Then analyzing data, reviewing, designing experiments, planning all these objectives are there. You can use methods say for example, writing a conference paper, notes for conference paper that will help to assess all these learning objectives. Another learning objectives may be performing procedures and demonstrating techniques whether the learners is able to perform a procedure or demonstrate a particular technique if you want to uh, assess. So, what are the methods you can use? You can use demonstration method, you can use role play method, you can use a media you can tell them they make a video, write script and produce or make a small video. They can produce a poster, lab report, all these things they can develop. Then using equipments, following laboratory procedures, following protocols, carrying out instructions. If these are the learning objectives, then what are the methods prepare? You may ask them to prepare an illustrated manual on using the equipment, particular audience and observation of real or simulated professional practice also can be one method. Coming to another learning objectives, managing and developing oneself. This may be another objective. So, how the learners are managing themselves and how they are developing themselves how they are working cooperatively, whether working independently, all these things if you want to assess. You can ask them for journal writing, portfolio is also very important and another one is group work. Then self directed, managing time, managing tasks, organizing these are the learning objectives. If you select then you can ask for group work also. Then accessing and managing information that is another learning objective whether the learner are able to access information or managing information. There are so many activities involved. So, the methods may be project, may be dissertation. Through the project and dissertation you can assess all this uh, what has been written here, researching, investigating, interpreting, organizing information, reviewing and paraphrasing information, collecting data, searching and managing information, observing and interpretation everything. Applied tasks, the practical application knowledge or knowledge knowledgeable tasks are methods which you can apply for this particular learning objectives. Then demonstrating knowledge and understanding, whether the learner is in a position to demonstrate their knowledge, knowledge after understanding, yes, whether they are in a position to recall. So, methods is very common method to use that is written examination, oral examination, essay or assignment, report writing comment on accuracy set records, device and encyclopedia entry, this etcetera, etcetera. There are other learning objectives say for example, describing, reporting, recognizing, identifying, relating of interrelated, so many learning objectives you can formulate, but you will have to select the appropriate method. Say you can say that you produce A to Z something, write an answer to client's question, short answer questions, true false, multiple choice answer questions. So, paper based or computer aided assessment, so many methods multiple methods are available to assess all these learning objectives. Now, designing, creating, performing, this is another learning objective. If you think that the learner will be able to design something, create something, perform something, they are high order, these are high order learning objectives. So, you can go for portfolio, develop in a portfolio, 
performance and presentation and projects. You can tell that the, you develop a project, you can go for a presentations. So, this will include all learning objectives like imagining, visualizing, designing, producing, creating, innovating, performing. Then another learning objectives that is a communicating. If you think that learner will be able to communicate properly after going through a particular course. So, it may be one and two way communication, may be communication within a group also. So, the methods may be written presentation, may be essay, report, reflective paper, etcetera. There may be oral presentations, group work, discussions, debate, role play. So, many methods are there you can select. Now, the question is how many methods you can select for your own learning and e-learning purposes. Now, learning objectives, another one is verbal, written and non-verbal communication. This is in, in that particular learning objectives where I discussed about the communication, arguing, describing, interviewing, negotiating, presenting, using a specific written forms, all these specific learning objectives. You can, you can assess through various methods like presentation to camera, observation of real and simulated professional practice and so on. Now, I talked about a portfolio. Now, you can you can you probably know uh, about the portfolio, but some important points I am going to highlight because this portfolio even you can develop e-portfolio also. Now, portfolio consists of evidence to show how one can meet specified learning outcomes that is very important and personalized collection of material actually it is. Now, here you can reflect yourself as a professional when you develop a portfolio. You can record your professional development in the portfolio. You can prove your performance on the job or in the class, what you have achieved or accomplished that can be reflected there. You can put the evidence of your new learning skills whatever you have achieved and it can be paper based, computer based or web based. So, this is a portfolio. Now, what the portfolio includes? It can include a CV, includes a transcripts, evidence of specific skills, written audio video or PPTs. It may use of graphic organizers. You, you can use work samples, projects, items, produce, etc. Demonstrate prior work of learning experience for educational credit. But one thing you keep in mind that the portfolio sh should be prepared such a way that it can be examined within 20 minutes time. If you develop a portfolio for any interview, for any job and if you want to present it to the selection committee, then you will have to prepare such a way that the uh, persons or committee members can uh, examine it within 20 minutes time. Now, friends coming to the assessment and evolution in open distance education. Now, in open distance education, we use uh, different types of assessment and evolution. Generally, we use self assessment, then we use continuous assessment and we use time and exams. We have projects, we have experiments, we have uh, laboratory work, dissertation and so on. Now, the self assessment, this is uh, the one important part of ODL assessment, open distance learning assessment in open distance learning. Now, here when the when you develop a self learning material unit, what we do? We present self assessment questions in between the units. After two units or three units, we put one self assessment questions. Here the learner can assess himself or herself. What the learner gain? Learner can come to know about their progress, whether they are able to uh, memorize or recall what they have learned, whether the learner can check whether the, the content they have understood properly and the self assessment questions stimulate the learners to go forward in his, for his, uh, in his or her thinking and they can go forward. So, what uh, is happening here when the learner is checking himself or herself and at the same time an answer is provided which generally is given at the end of a unit and learner can see whether the learner is in right direction or not. If it, if it happens then learner is getting some kind of reward and feedback, so he can proceed further. But if the learner sees that no, he has not learned the aspect properly, he cannot answer the questions properly, then he can go back to that content once again and can read it. Second one is the continuous assessment. Now, in continuous assessment is very important part of uh, distance education system. In this uh, continuous assessment generally we use the assignments. 
probably you have heard the this particular term assignments. There are various types of assignments. These assignments are called tutor mark assignments in distance education. Now, assignments uh, have some weightage. Assignments carry weightage of 25 to 30 percent to pass an examination. In some courses it is 25 percent, some courses it is 30 percent and terminal exam that is 70 to 75 percent weightage in the final results. Now, Assignments and tutor comments. Let us discuss something about assignments and tutor comments. As I told that assignments is a very important device uh, through which a two way communication takes place in distance education system. Now, you know when uh, the ODL distance education the terminology has not come was not used uh, previously what the terminology was there you know probably that that was the correspondence education because the distance education started as a correspondence education that is first generation of distance education. So, that time there was no assignment because the correspondence education was one way generally institute develops some material they used to send the material to the learner the learner used to go through the material and after that they used to appear in the exam. So, there is there is only one way communication. But the, when the assignments were introduced in this system, then two way communication was introduced. Assignments generally are sent uh, along with the study materials to the learners. The learners they go through the study material and they go through the assignments questions and they answer the assignments questions and submit the assignments questions answers to the university for evaluation. And then the evaluator they evaluates the assignments questions assignment answers and then they send it back to the learner. Learner can come to know about his or her progress and what grade he has or she has achieved. Then he can uh, utilize this particular guidance or the feedback what he receives from the teacher or evaluator uh, for developing the next assignments. In this way the learner used to get a communication or feedback from the institute. That is why it is called there is a two way communication. First, the institute sends the assignments to the learner. The learner goes through the assignments, answer the assignments questions, submit the assignments to the university. Again, the teacher evaluated, they go through the answer, they give grades, put grades and they provide comments, tutor comments and that comments goes back to the learner. Learner can come to know that how he or she is performing, what is the drawback, what is the strength, this and. And then in the next assignments, he can utilize his uh, the teacher's uh, guidance and suggestions given by the teacher and he can try to improve upon the next assignments. In this way, the two way communication takes place. Even after receiving the answers and the grades, the students can write back to the university once again that are say for example, one teacher is not satisfied with a particular grade, he has he has got C grade, he is not satisfied with that one. He can write to the university and that particular evaluator teacher asking for explanation of that grade. So, in this way the two way communication takes place. Now, that is why assignments is called it is a learning task. So, what we see that it enable the learners to see that what they have learned and whether they are expected to learn, whether they have learned the same thing they are expected to learn or uh, from the course or their response can be uh, evaluated and the feedback can be given. The teacher has an opportunity to provide the feedback after going to the answer and help the learner to improve upon. So, tutor comments is coming to a very important aspect of assignments at the time of evolution. Only the putting grade will not work, so tutor comments is very as important. So, now I am coming to one important aspect that is some factors associated with the assignments and preparation and evolution. So, if you are involved in this kind of assignments, preparation and, and evolution, you, you must know what are the factors and how to develop an assignment that is also important aspect. Say for example, assignments who prepares the assignment questions? The assignments questions is prepared by a teacher or faculty. Now, when the teacher develops the assignments, he has something in his mind, he has own perception, he knows what will be the answer and what are the key factors or components to be covered at the time of answering these assignments. So, he knows it. Interesting thing is that the faculty knows, the faculty put the questions, then the question goes to the learners. Say for example, in a course there are 1000 learners. So, one faculty 
his own perception, he has developed the assignments, he has put the questions. Now, the question has gone to 1000 learners. So, 1000 learners have 1000 types of perception because if the assignments carries uh, very good instructions, say for example, number of words within how many words the answer has to be written, what are the components or points to be covered, which blocks to be covered, which units to be covered, all these kinds of guidance or instructions are there, then the learner will be able to uh, get then what the particular faculty wants, what is the perception of the particular faculty with regard to that particular assignments. But if it is not there, if there is a question only and even only the question and maybe uh, maybe word limit is there, there is no guidance. guidance. So, in that particular case, different different learners will think from different point of view how to answer. So, their perception will differ. Then another interesting part is that when the answer will submit 1000 learners will submit the answers to their study centers, then maybe 100 evaluators will evaluate the answers. So, 100 evaluators will have different perceptions. So, they will go through the assignments as per their own perceptions and they will evaluate the assignments. So, one assignment has so many perceptions because at the time of developing the assignments, writing the assignments and evaluating the assignments before the people differ. So, there is a need. So, the, the main thing is that what is the strength of the assignments we will have to see. Now, assignments should be judged when, when you receive an assignments answer, it should be judged in terms of importance and in terms of the strength. Say for example, whether the assignments uh, covers the study material or the contents given in the study, the study material or the assignments has been given from the material which has not been covered uh, in the study material. That is uh, whether there is guidance, proper guidance this, that is the strength and if it is not there, so we can say that it is a weak assignments, the assignments is very weak. In that particular case, case the evaluator should not punish the student. Now, distance educator's perception coverage of self learning material, these are very important. So, another important point is coming up that is assessor's ideal response. Uh, in this particular case, wh who is evaluator? Say for example, I told that there are 100 evaluators. So, 100 evaluators, each evaluator can develop a an, an ideal response before going through the assignments because one evaluator will go through so many assignments, he or she will not go through so many assignments response at a time. Maybe he will go through one assignment response in the month of February, another assignment response in the month of March, another one in April or May, something like that. So, the time also will vary. So, if they prepare one assessment, assessors, if there is a assessor's ideal response, if they prepare it and keep it with them, so whenever they evaluate the assignments answer, they, they will do the justice. Otherwise, if they do not have any particular response, ideal response or response, what should be the response of that particular assignments, they do not prepare, then the grading may suffer. So, they, these are the points we will have to uh, keep in mind at the preparation of assignments and evaluation also. That is why sometimes the people ask whether perfect grading is possible in distance education. Yes, perfect grading is possible if you follow this what I have talked about. If you see the strength of the assignments, if you see the uh, the assignments carry guidance, carry proper guidance so that the perception, even the perception varies, then every students, every student, every evaluator will come to know what the faculty wants from this particular assignment. So, that can be minimized. Now, here I am going to discuss about tutor comments with an example. Here you will find that a question, uh, this is a uh, real question and the real answer real answer I am going to show you. Now, the question actually we will have to answer within 800 words it is written and the question is what are support services? How do these support services help distance learner? Evaluate the effectiveness of the support services utilized by you as a distance learner at IGNO. This is a question, a uh, real question has been given to the learner and you see how the learner has answered and what are the comments have been given by the evaluator. Now, left side these are comments and right side is the answer. You can see that uh, the learner has started the answer with uh, uh, this quotation. It is not quotation mark is not there, but it is a quotation. 
uh, suddenly has stopped. Then he has given pre-entry stage support services. Now here, the evaluator has given a comment. You could have presented a brief introduction at the beginning, and then could have discussed the meaning of student support services because the learner has not discussed student support services here. Now this particular comment, what kind of comment it is? This is called constructive comment. This is called constructive comment. You are helping the learner to develop the answer and to modify the answer. So, it is called constructive comment. Now, here comments mention various stages of support, student support service first and then discuss each stage under subheadings. That is another comment and this is also a constructive comment and there is a that tuition, tuition opportunity. Yeah. And then some comments, margin comments has been given by the uh, evaluator. You can see during the course, the filling. So, he is telling that filling may come at the pre-entry stage also because the learner was talking about feel insecure. So, it may come any time due distance education system. Here another comment you can see it is called you are right. That means, this comment actually is called positive comment. You know when you go through the assignments answer definitely you will find some uh, parts which are right. The right. So, you will have to appreciate or you will have to accept that one which are right. So, that is called positive comment. You can write you are right, you can say yes, good, very good, yes, okay. This kind of words you can write in the margin. Then you can write another comment, this can be informed at pre entry stage. That means, uh, the proper place, you are talking about the proper place, this is you are giving a guidance. Then post course support, and this is always important one aspect you are highlighting, you are telling this is very important, always important. Some part, if it is not clear, then you can mention that part is not clear or something is not correct, you can mention at the same time, you can provide that what is correct and what is correct that also you can mention. Then you, the another positive comments, right you are, then these are the comments you have seen. Then another constructive comment, you could discuss this part more critically with examples. Then another one that you could evaluate the effectiveness of the support services utilized by the distance learner. So, I, I think you have understood that tutor comments that constructive comments, positive comments and even if you give the negative comments with that one the uh, constructive comments is very important. Then last you will have to write a global comments. The global comments meaning is that here you will have to explain the grade what you have given you will have to justify the grade. Say for example, here C grade has been given, but it has been justified properly. It has been mentioned what are the uh, deficiencies in the assessments and what is the uh, strength. Then uh, very, very uh, within very limited sentences, it has been justified that why the C grade has been given. And this is the IGNU format and at the end actually there are some boxes uh, rating uh, for rating say accurate information and inaccurate information the 5 points are there. So, here you can see the middle uh, tick has been given in the middle say good conceptual analysis poor in this way. So, if the graded C automatically the middle uh, point actually will have to tick. So, friends uh, this is the last slide I have shown you. Now, uh, what I have discussed today you can remember that I have discussed about definition of assessment and evaluation. Then I have discussed the difference I have talked about assessment methods and then I have gone to the assignments and evaluation and importance of assignments in distance education. I have talked about how you can evaluate the tutor comments and I have also mentioned that uh, while developing the assignments questions and answers, uh, it is very important to look after the strength of the uh, assignments and when you evaluate the assignments, you should not uh, punish the students if the assignments has weakness. So, these are the things. So, when you develop your assignments for your course, online course, then definitely you keep all these things in mind and the methods what I have discussed, assessment methods and the techniques what I have discussed, you can try to implement all these techniques in e-learning courses. Probably there will be another, another session where you learn how to implement all these things. Thank you.